Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and for the final time, thank you for joining me on an Englishman abroad. We are coming out in Indonesia managing Solok United. So as I said in the last episode, we managed to win the Cup and League double. As you can see by the screen, we also had it the Super Cup at the start of the season. So a treble winning season in our final season, the 2027 season. So in today's episode, I'm going to run through this. We're then going to have a little look at the accomplishments and a few of the players that we have signed and developed across the save before saying thank you for sticking with it and watching us out in an interesting league in Indonesia. But before we jump into it, please don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button to help the channel out. So let's jump into this season review and have a look at how we got on. So as we were going along, we were pretty much changing the way that we were going about our business. We were looking more in terms of youth players and players to develop instead of going out and signing anybody major. So the big talking points of the season in terms of players that we bought him was Wayu Hardy. Cost 59,000, he played 20 games with four goals, nine assists, and an average rating of 7.08. Arnold Unluvu, he came in from Ferroviario de Maputo for 87,000. He played 48 games with 10 assists for a centre back and a 7.01 rating. I forgot to say that Wayu Hardy was actually player of the season, or signing of the season, should I say. Uh, Miftahul Budi was a free transfer from Persebaya. He ended up playing 21 games, scoring 9 goals with 6 assists and a 6.99 average rating. Agus Arella was a goalkeeper who came in towards the end when Francisco was out on international duty. He played 9 games with an average rating of 6.92. Uh, Novan Karis Hanafi. He's another goalkeeper who paid £105,000 for, he played three times and had an average rate of 6.83. We also had a few other young players that we ended up loaning out to other teams. In terms of the season, as I said, we have won another Indonesian Shafi Liga 1 title with a goal difference of 102. Point score was 94. We didn't lose a single game, so our final season was an invincible season. We were expected to win the league. We did it. We got a B-plus for that. With the Super Cup, the board weren't really bothered about it, but we went and won that in the opening game of the campaign with a 4-0 victory over Bali United. And then the Indonesian Cup, the board said it was not important. We felt it was, and we went and won it. We actually won every single game across every leg did have a few dodgy draws and that Celebest one from earlier in the season and the Midori United one were a little bit dodgy but other than that we played well. I'm surprised that the Asian Champions League isn't part of this season review considering we did play in that but we didn't win we actually went out in the semi-finals against Gionbuk. So moments to remember our biggest win was a 12-0 win. We beat Bayankara, put them to the sword. They were very disappointing, really. Uh, at the time, I said I, I didn't think they were as bad as they were, and then we smashed them 12-0, so they definitely were. I think they got relegated with one of the lowest points totals ever. Match to remember was another double-digit score where we scored 10 goals against PSM, and goal of the season was Matthias Firmino's goal from the right midfielder as he dribbles the ball from within his own half before scoring a well-struck effort from 26 metres. In terms of the finances, the club's reputation didn't change across the season. We had no new sponsorship deals, but our annual revenue for sponsorship was up, our broadcast revenue was up, our corporate and hospitality was up, competition prize money went down considering we didn't win the Champions League this season but we did last season and our match day commercial and retail was up we had £10,250 worth of merchandise sales with £1,000 of that roughly being non-domestic we had 350 shirts sold Hamid, Mateus Firmino, Maya, Budi and Prosecchio being the most popular 
in terms of our lineup, I think that is it's almost right the fact that Keiki actually left the club and ended up playing in the Middle East is probably one that wouldn't make it in there across the entire season but the rest of the team looks sound in terms of accolades so we won best coach of the month of april and then in terms of competition awards gunter hamid won our fans player of the season he also won young player of the season signing of the season was Wayu hardy goal of the season retires for me no top goal scorer was ahmed Meyer with 46 Moanto ended up with 23 assists. Gunter Hamid had nine player of the match awards. He also had the highest average rating of 7.5. And Wayu Hardy completed 48 passes per 90 minutes. In terms of record breakers, we've got Ahmed Meyer with five goals in a game. Five goals in a league game. Francisco takes over as most appearances by a player with 160. Ahmed Meyer is now the record league goal scored by a player for the club with 138 and Novan Charis Hanafi was the highest transfer fee paid for a goalkeeper so history in the making we've got a blank panel here that's very rare but it says that we did win three trophies it was a superb season for Hayu Tara as they claimed their fifth successive title to back up the pre-season credentials so that's everything that was expected of us quick little run if we go to the home page here we go so if we have a look at that you can see that we won an asian champions league in 2027 so at the back end of last season we then won the shoppy legal one title five years in a row 24 25 26 27 and this year 28 we have won three Indonesian Cups, 26, 27 and 28. We got promoted from Liga 2 at the first time of asking by winning it in 2021. And then we won four Super Cups, 25, 26, 27, 28. So as you can see by the information here, um, our club captain was Mateus Firmino for the season. 23-year-old winger who we bought. How much did we pay for Firmino? So we paid £250 from, from Matthias Firmino from Fast Club. And what a £250 bargain he turned out to be. Uh, in his first season, he scored 12. Uh, sorry, scored 2 from 12. Then he scored 7 from 22, 15 from 30, 14 from 30. In this season, he had some injuries which restricted him to just 20 appearances. But he did score 7 goals. From those, he had a season's best 19 assists in 2026 leaving him with career stats including his Brazilian clubs of 147 play, 47 goals, 58 assists, 21 player of matches and a 7.32 so very impressive from him. In terms of our key player Arnold Unlovu, he is a young Zimbabwean centre back. How much did we pay for him? We paid £87,000 from Ferrovario de Maputo and he came straight in, played 27 games, didn't score, had four assists, seven as an average rating. And our hot prospect is Hwang Seung Royal. He is a young South Korean, or sorry, Republic of Korea. We pay, we actually got him on a free transfer. I think he was spotted by the scouts. And looking at his stats, I think he is a player that do very very well in the game after we finish this save a few other players just to look at so the vice captain was yogi saputra he was a player who we bought who we got on a free from seven Penang. he was a loyal servant to the club played very well at the back he had a little rocky spell midway through the save where he asked to leave uh let's have a look at the rest of the squad any players that we can point out. So Andreas Francisco came in on a free transfer as well from Arima. He replaced who was the goalkeeper that we had? I think we had. Oh, that's interesting. I can't actually think why is 
is asking for a set three hundred million pounds. That's interesting. He's valued at thirty nine point five, asking price of three hundred million pounds. Okay, club obviously want to make some money off of him. But yes, he was a goalkeeper. Came in to replace somebody else who had left the club and stepped in and filled in comfortably. Uh, we had a look at Onlovu. Pablo Quintana is another one. He is a Ecuadorian centre-back. Young lad. Uh, 18 years old. Came to the club for a free, from a free, or on a free transfer from Liga de Quito in Ecuador. Stepped in, played absolutely fantastic football, and was part of the reason that our defending became so good. We have who else should we have a look at? Matas Firmino is unhappy, concerned about my decision making, which is strange. Anger Amri wants a new contract. If we go to the main man though, Ahmed Maya. So, still only 26 years old. He has played for the club now for five seasons. £2,700 purchase. And look at the stats here. So, in his first season, he scored 20 in 28, 21 in 30, 26 in 33. And then the last two seasons have just been immense. 38 goals in 34 games. 33 goals in 26 appearances. And that has left him with career totals of 255 games, 179 score, 45 assists, 22 player of the match and a 7.30 rating. So another big factor in us doing as well as we have. So this is going to be it for an Englishman abroad. I am going to be wrapping this one up here. It's been an absolute blast having the series both in Thailand and Indonesia for Football Manager 21. There is a possibility that an Englishman abroad may come back for 22. I haven't finalised locations, but I might do it with a twist. It might be an Englishman abroad managing an international team. So something to look out for in the fm22 announcement video but it's been an absolute blast i love coming to places like this learning the league learning the, the way that the players develop and trying to help the national teams and just basically raising the profile of indonesian football has been brilliant our champions league win and that run was phenomenal and it's something that I have thoroughly enjoyed. And if you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. Keep up to date with everything going on on the channel. We will still have um, De Rotten Bullen coming for a little bit. But soon will be the FM22 video where I will announce what my first plans and the first things that I will be looking at are in the brand new game so this is going to be me wrapping up an englishman abroad a big thank you for watching and i will catch you on a different video